Hello and welcome to class of third generation. So today in this class we are going to discuss about identifiers which is used in third generation. So as we know that 3G has a RAN part which we call as UD RAN, Universal Data Register Radio Access Network. And this is a core network. So here in MSS part we have components like we have MSC for call processing and STSN for data. So as a topic is identifiers, so that means 3G is working on identifiers of GSM as well as GPRS using the both. So we identifiers used as IMSI, which is International Mobile Subscriber Identity. Identity. It uses DMSI, which is temporary mobile subscriber identity. IMEI, International Mobile Equipment. Identity MSISDN Mobile Subscriber Integrated Service Digital Number CGI, Cell, Global, Identity, it has LAC, Location, Area, Code, that means all of these identifiers will be used for the call purposes, for equipment purposes as well as for user identification. Now for data access like in case of GPRS, we are using two uh, main identifiers. One is PTMSI, another one is TLLI. So let's discuss about these identifiers because these are new for GPRS as well as these are used in the 3G. Next, all identifiers are same as we have covered in our GSM class. So let's start with P T M S I. This is packet temporary mobile subscriber identity. Now this identifier with P D M S I this basically works in packet domain or I can say that this works in IP domain and it basically works with switching or routing of the packets that means with connection like this is a UE it has to pass to SGSN and SGSN has to route to the external network so whenever we are having data access that means we are having packet access so we have P TMSI packet temporary mobile subscriber identity so that it comes to know that where UE is located. So for packet access, we have packet temporary mobile subscriber identity for identification of a user equipment. Whenever we are having, we are in a packet domain, we are accessing the package, then we require to use the packet temporary mobile subscriber identity. So this is a function of PDMSI. Now next we have double li which is total logical link identifier so here in this case we have local we have three types local t double li we have foreign 
T double L I and then we have random T double L I. UE connection that means for UE to be connection with SGSM before any transmission of packets whenever we require to connect to the SGSM so that we can have data transfer so UE can be attached to the SGSM with the help of local logical link identifier for in we are in one routing area here we don't have location area we have a routing area allocated from which packets will be routed so whenever we have to move from one RA to another RA so that means whenever we have to move from one routing area one to routing area two we require a foreign total logical link identifier here in this case and random TLLI is required for initial access that means whenever we require initial access for the data or data package, so we require a random total logical link identifier. So these are the identifiers which are there in the 3G. These identifiers are also used in GPRS because same functionality here we have GPRS attached. Process will be same, but the technology is different. That's why here we have 3G and we call it 3G identifier. Otherwise, BDMZ and TLLI identifiers are there in GPRS, are there in edge technology. So, let's talk about RA. Like in case of GSM, whenever we have to locate a user, we have its location area, we have its location area code and location area identifier for that code. Now, similar to this, here in case of packet data, we have divided the area into proper RAs, where RA stands for our routing area. Now each and every routing area has its routing area code and identify for this and whenever we are changing our routing area that means if we are moving on a mobility we are moved from one area to another so we have REU which is routing area update. So these are the 3G identifiers. Thank you so much.